Happy New Year guys from JS Lovers team. Guys, 2017 is here. I hope you guys had awesome New Year party. So as 2017 is here, so is our new video. Today's video is a small tutorial on CSS calc function. If you've been following us on our previous videos, uh, in the CSS variables video, I used a property calc. And today I'm going to show you in detail that function. Before that, a small history about CSS calc function. In CSS, uh, we used to do a lot of mathematical calculations. For example, if we are making a layout, we, we want the width, we know that width should be excluding of padding, border, and for that we need to depend upon manual calculations. Uh, for the border thing, we do, do have the property box sizing, but for the paddings, whenever we are doing the width and the calculations with padding, we need to do a lot of calculations manually only. But things get complicated when we are we went into the responsive era. So we have like three to four breakpoints, then we have percentages, then we have the cutter spaces and so on. So these calculations get more complex. And handling those calculations by hand was a very big task. Thanks to preprocessors, SAS and S, they introduce Mathematical, mathematical calculation within the preprocessor. The life become more easier because now you can leave everything on the preprocessor. You just need to pass the values and behind the scene, preprocessor itself will do the calculations. So you are not spending a lot of time on manual things. But when we are working on CSS, we know that we are dealing with multiple unit values we have values in pixels we have values in percentages we have values in em and especially when we are working in responsive designs there would be the possibility that in one media uh, in one media query we want something in pixels in another media query we want something in em i know i know this is not the right approach but there are some cases where we need to do it there there are few layout designs where we are dealing with like widths and percentages then fonts in pixel or uh, width in percentages and space gutter spaces in pixel so on but the limitation of sa uh, preprocessors in mathematical calculation is that they can't handle the pixel percentage multiple unit mathematical calculation that is the limitation and that is why css3 calc function is here now you can leave everything on CSS3 calc function. You want to play with percentage plus PX, you want to play with percentage EM, you can just drop your values there and calc function behind the scenes will handle all the calculation by itself. This is as simple as that. So guys, CSS3's calc function is very easy to use. I'm going to show you a few line of code that what you can do it, with it, how you can use it. But innovation and more creative ideas is with you so next time when you are working on your project try to see that how you can use calc function the advantage is that calc function can handle multiple values uh, you are not dependent upon any preprocessor and it is native to css so guys let's jump into the code and see how it works guys, welcome to the code section of this tutorial the calc function is very simple and the, this code part is very small because it is very easy to use calc function. So the markup I am using here is a main training container and under that I have three child of div. So the first thing first I will add some CSS to the main so that we get to know that what is happening on our page. So I am just giving background and let's give the width like 780px and uh, let's make it center line okay so guys if you will check the width of this particular main tag is 780 yeah it's 780 now i want that to add 10 px padding in this now what will happen that that 10 px padding will get add on the in this width and that from left and right side so the width will now increase by 20 px which become 800 which is actually wrong because i'm looking for the width of 780 so what we used to do we used to subtract 20 px from the width and we change the value like this now in future if you need to modify your padding every time you need to go 
and do the manual calculations and change your width or if uh, you are changing your width then you need to do the change in your padding so it's a vice versa and a lot of manual effort as of now this is one div but imagine when you are working on a big project where you have a very complex layout such type of calculations actually do impact a load lot and is a very buggy process so what we can do is we can use the calc function here and what you can do in that is this is how you define your calc function in that just pass the width and ask to subtract it that's it this is what is required if you will now check the width is now 780 but again here is a one problem the problem is that that every time you need to go and change this value but in our last value we learn about the variables so what we can do is we can make a variable name padding and assign it that value now I can use this variable here and use it but if you will see that the padding is now wrong why because the value here coming is 10 px but we have like left padding and right padding so I need to multiply it by 2 now if you will check the now if you will check the padding would uh, the width of the container would be right 780 so this is how you use the calc function as of now I'm just using px but you can play around you can throw the em you can throw px or and percentages and whatever you can mix and match the values and you will see that CSS will itself handle it very beautifully okay now the second example is when I want to deal with the percentages so for example I'm making a grid for the responsive side so I can say that let's say 300 divided by 3 px should be the width the background is red the display and line block okay we did something wrong here see so this is how it is handling automatically it is creating your grid and handling all the calculations if you want to subtract the gutter space or you want to subtract the padding whatever as we did in the main function you need to do the same here so you can do every mathematical calculation in this calc function it is very easy very useful guys in future projects if you are working on any css calculation related thing try to incorporate incorporate your calc function and try to play around with the variables as much as you can okay cool guys this is for this video this is all for this video do let me know uh, your feedbacks your suggestions in the comment section if you like this video just give thumbs up if you are new to our channel please hit the subscribe button bye guys